And what sort of legacy do you want to leave? I want people to leave saying I'm exactly the same off stage as I was on stage. That no matter what their past has been, they have a spotless future. The pain is a signal to grow, not to suffer. Once we learn the lesson, the pain teaches us, the pain goes away. Crisis, it, it, it doesn't define who we are. Crisis does not make or break the man or woman. It just reveals the true character within. So through my experience, I learned that we're, no, no one can become as good as we can possibly come unless we're tested, unless we're stretched, which allows me to publicly announce to every audience of any size that my accident was clearly one of the best things that ever happened to me. Don't misunderstand. My accident wasn't one of the best things that happened to me, but who I became as a man and what I learned about life and the most important things about becoming significance is clearly one of the best things that ever happened to me. So I don't wish any of your viewers to go get hit by a bus and then figure out what you learn from that. But what I actually challenge you to realize is that in life there's no mistakes, only lessons. And so regardless of what happens to us, it's never about what happens to us, it's about what we do with what happens to us that defines who we are. Which means that what we've been in the past does not make us who we are today, no matter what you hear or who tells you that. What we hope to become in the future makes us who we are today. And if we're in a tough situation where maybe our kids are falling off the deep end or they're going down the wrong path, discipline is to teach, not to punish. You can't increase a person's performance mm -hmm. by making him feel worse. Humiliation immobilizes our behavior. What we've got to do is focus in on the positive things that all of us have and then accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative, and somehow inspire one another to let go and with all due respect, tie into the universe, tie into whom I, I worship God and figure out how to do the right thing simply because it's the right thing to do. And when we do that, suddenly we understand the law of attraction, law of intention, the law of vibration, frequency, you know, all the things that we hear about in all of our seminars because we now understand it in terms of how we see the world and that's how we create significance. Well, thank you for helping me feel significant today and sharing your words of wisdom. I've, I was actually going to ask you your closing words of wisdom, but you just did it so well. Thanks. And thank you for all that you do and who you are and the message that you are teaching to everyone. Thanks. Now, if people want to get more information about you, whether it's your book or your speaking, yeah. because I watched you and you are phenomenal. And I Thanks. mean this from the bottom of my heart. Thanks. Absolutely phenomenal, hilarious, and yeah. just uh, all around connected and wonderful person. Thanks. I appreciate that. I'm glad Maria didn't introduce me as a motivational speaker. They're shallow. They say things like we become what we think about and we know that's not true. If that was true, I'd have been a woman by the time I was 12 years old. <laughs> I'm an inspirational speaker, a transformational leadership guru if I can consider myself that. My new book, The Art of Significance, Achieving a Level Beyond Success, it's available in Barnes and Nobles. It's available on Amazon.com. You can get a hold of me at my website if you want to curiously cruise around, see some video clips. DanClarkSpeak.com, ArtOfSignificance.com, and my 800 number is 800-676-1121. I love to speak. That's what I do really as, as my profession. I'm a professional speaker, and I'd love to speak for all the conventions that come here to Las Vegas and anywhere else in the world that you think a, a guy like me could add some value. Oh, absolutely. Thanks. Thank you so much Appreciate again. You. Thank you.